Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jared, and this is my third video on how to build a homemade jet engine. Today we're going to focus on how to build the EVAP tube and the flame tube. Uh, first let me explain a little bit of what those two things do. Uh, the flame tube is going to separate your fuel from your air and help it mix properly. The EVAP tube is for use with mostly your bigger engines. I'm going to be running diesel, kerosene, and maybe even some jet fuel. Those fuels are very similar. Um, but if you're just using propane, then you're not going to need the EVAP system. Diesel fuel, however, requires to be heated up before it's burned, so that's what the EVAP tube is going to do. Alright, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is cut out all of your pieces. You have a 3 inch diameter circle made out of the 1 16th steel plate. You'll need three 3 quarter inch tubes that are about 8 inches long. You'll end up trimming them later, but longer is better for right now. You'll also want to make sure that one end on each tube has a 45 degree angle. You'll also need three of the same diameter tubing that are about an inch and a half to two inches long and you'll want the same 45 degree angle on those. You'll also want a one inch diameter tube about 12 inches long and that will end up trimming later too. You'll need a one inch circle of the steel plate and that's going to be the cap at the top. You'll need two 4 inch diameter circles. Put a hole in the middle of them, it doesn't matter what size, keep it small because we're going to make it bigger later. And the last piece that you're going to need is a 4 inch diameter tube. You want it about 2.5 to 3 inches long. You'll notice I'm not giving you exact measurements. Um, that's because cut it longer first and then later you can trim it and find out what measurement works best for your size design. So let's start off by taking the end plate to the combustion chamber that we made in the first video and also take the 4 inch circle that you just cut, either one, it doesn't matter and you're going to want to drill 6 similar holes in both of them because they're going to bolt together and then you'll also want to take the other 4 inch circle and the 3 inch circle and drill 4 holes that are exactly the same and one hole in the middle, make it about 1 inch because this is going to fit your 1 inch tubing Next, take the 3 quarter inch tubing pieces that you cut and weld the smaller ones together with the longer ones to make L pieces like these. Next, take your 1 inch tube and drill 3 3 quarter inch holes and evenly space them around the top of the tube. Now here you're going to want to get kind of creative with your angle grinder. Just try to round off the inside portion of the L piece so that it will fit directly onto the contours of the one inch tube. After you have all those done you just weld them into place on the one inch tube and then take the one inch circle that you cut out and weld that as an end cap on the top. Next take all the plates that you drilled holes in and you're going to need to weld some nuts on the back of them for your bolts to screw into. Now the best way that I found to do this is you line the plates up, put your bolt through, then tighten the nut on the other side and then weld it on. Now you're going to take the 3 inch circle and weld it onto the bottom of what is now your heat exchanger. Uh, if you'll notice in this picture I cut the 1 inch tube a little bit shorter. Um, after you see everything that we're doing you'll know how much you need to trim it to make it fit in your combustion chamber. Next take that piece of the 4 inch tubing that you cut and you're going to want to draw a rectangle on it. That's about 1 fourth of the entire circumference um, and you're going to cut this hole out you want maybe about a half inch gap from the top to the bottom. You're also going to need your flame tube to bolt onto here so make three holes for the bolts, put the nuts on and weld them on the inside. Now take the four inch circle with the four holes in it and weld it onto the top of this tube. This is going to be where your heat exchanger bolts on. Next you need to weld the disc with the six holes onto the bottom of your tube and you need to take some careful planning here to make sure that the opening on the 4 inch tube lines up with the intake of your combustion chamber which is going to be where all the air is coming out of the compressor. Now there is going to be a tube there, I'm sorry I didn't cover that earlier, I kind of forgot about that, uh, but just know where you want this tube to be. After you're done with that, just grind down some of your welds and you can start to bolt things together and this is what your heat exchanger is going to start to look like. Next we're going to make the flame tube 
and this helps to separate the fuel and the incoming air so that it mixes properly. Now, what I'm using here is a piece of a dryer exhaust vent hose. It's very thin metal, very light, which I like, but hopefully this doesn't melt in the middle of the combustion chamber, but we'll find out, and I'll let you know when I get there. Uh, you're going to want to bolt this onto the three bolts that you put onto your four inch tube and then also cut an opening where you cut your rectangle earlier. After you put these pieces together you may find that it's a little longer than you need so you may have to trim it up. Next we need to drill some holes in the flame tube. I used around a hundred holes. If you're making a smaller engine you're going to need less. A bigger engine you're going to need more. Um, but the, the holes will start off small near the bottom of the flame tube and get bigger as they go up. Mine were about a quarter inch in diameter. Here's a little trick I wanted to try. This is how the flame tubes are in actual plane engines. Uh, first what you want to do is take the drill bit that you drilled the holes with, use the solid end, and stick it into the hole that you drilled, and then bend the drill bit straight down towards the bottom of the flame tube so that it makes sort of a cheese grater effect. This way when the air is passing by the tube it will catch and pull it into the tube better. Alright, so here's our finished product. Um, this is the flame tube, it's just going to pull right off. Um, and here's the evap system. Uh, you guys are probably wondering what you just built and how it works. The compressor is going to blow air and it's going to hit right in here. It's going to go in and mix with the fuel and pressurize it all the way up this tube and kind of atomize it and then it'll come out where it's ignited. Um, so I hope that helps you guys out. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions. A little side note, this next video, it may take me a bit to get it up. Um, the parts for it are kind of expensive. Uh, I'm going to be working on the fuel system and the oil system, so pumps, nozzles, uh, motors to drive the pumps. It's going to get a little pricey, so it may take me a bit to save up money and find all these parts. So please be patient with me.